Hey guys, let's talk typefaces. My name's Lila Higgins, if you're new here, hello. Do I look like I'm squinting at all in this video because I'm blind as a bat without my glasses? <sighs> I've had them since I was four, but I think I'm looking at the general direction of the phone. Typefaces are fun. They really are. They don't have to stress you out. Stop letting them stress you out. Just keep it simple. And because all of you liked my last video so much, I got all the DMs, um, I'm gonna continue the vibe of design concepts. Honestly, I figured you'd be kind of bored by design concepts, but apparently they're really helpful. So I'm gonna talk through them in the next couple of videos and maybe forever. The most important thing I want you to know about typefaces throughout this whole video is that the purpose of typefaces is not to look pretty. It's to get your message across. If people can't hear your message, they're not gonna read it. They're not gonna purchase anything from you. They're just gonna keep scrolling because you use the same font that everybody uses that is the default script font in Canva. I'm looking at you, playlist. So typefaces, also called fonts. My understanding is that there are four types of font files. You have OTF, TTF, web font, and PostScript. And they all pretty much function the same. They're made by different companies and the most common one is TTF. So likely when you download from a store like Creative Market, which I'll link below, um, you're gonna get a TTF file. Now, there's a difference between a desktop font and a web font. They're pretty self-explanatory. One is for websites and one is for your desktop or desktop apps that you're designing in. When you're choosing your typefaces or when you're choosing your fonts, you need to keep in mind uh, which font goes where and can you use the font you're using on Illustrator or an app like Over or Canva also on your website. I generally suggest three fonts for your brand, uh, but I use a lot for mine because I think fonts are cool and I don't stick to rules. My friends say I'm a rebel, probably true, but I still believe the empire did nothing wrong. I'm just kidding. Anyways, the main types of typefaces that you see out there are serif, sans serif, script, and uh, wingding is a font. And then there's like character fonts, which are not technically scripts, but also not super uniform. Fonts are created from vector files, which if you wanna know more about vector files, tell me in the comments below and I'll make a video about that. It's really, really nerdy and I do a pretty good job explaining it, but I don't really even understand what it is or how math works, so I can do my best. Let me know. Fonts are a type of vector file, which essentially means they're not defined by pixels, they're defined by geometric shapes, so they can be sized tiny or large. A lot of people come to me and ask like, hey, I really like this logo. Um, what font is it? Oftentimes logos are hand lettered or hand designed So you likely will be able to find a mimicked one that kind of sort of looks like it Like for example, you can go find a coca-cola style font You can go find the Harry Potter styled font But it's not technically the font that the designer used to create that original logo A lot of my designs are hand lettered even if it's just me constructing letters out of different shapes as you can see in this logo Ta -da! Now there is sans serif, serif, script, and wingding Script is just like it sounds, it's scripty. Don't use scripts unless you know what you're doing. I love you, and I know you love scripts, but just don't, please, okay. Serif and sans serif, sans meaning without, serif meaning little stroke line thing on the end of a letter. So you have serif font, which are fonts like Times New Roman and Georgia, and then you have sans serif, which are fonts like Montserrat and Railway. They don't have the serifs. So here's an example. This is serif, this is not. This is sans serif. This is serif. Serif, sans serif, serif, sans serif. Get it? Generally, when you're picking your fonts, you want opposites that attract. So you wanna have fonts that have the same vibe, but you want them to complement one another. So generally, you're gonna be choosing three fonts for your brand. So you've got your paragraph font, your header font, and your subheader font. And generally, your paragraph is going to be a serif font. So then I will usually play with the other two and I will do one that's a serif and one that's a sans serif. Another thing that you want to decide on is the rules for your fonts. Are you gonna have them in all caps? Are you gonna have spacing between the letters? What are the rules for each individual font and how is it gonna be used in your brand? Here's a few of my favorite font pairings. See how they're all opposite, but they all kind of have the same vibe and feel. If you want something like Times New Roman, which is kind of old style, matched with something like Railway because it just comes off looking mismatched. Well, let's talk about script fonts because I know you're asking, but Lila, can't I please have a script font? Okay, you can have a script font, but I'm talking like very minimal usage, like one word out of a whole quote, one word on a page, the beginning letter on a blog post, one singular, small, tiny, just a little bit because script font is very hard for most people to read, especially on your website. 
and it's super trendy, which means that it's gonna wear out in months and you're gonna have to rebrand everything, which I don't want you to have to do. You should have a brand that's timeless and lasts forever. Fonts give us this unique ability to take our message and present it in a way that has control and poise and function, but also form. But it's a very subtle way to show your brand principles. It's a very subtle way to show the intentionality behind what you're trying to get out into the world. Remember, branding is not to look pretty. Branding is to get a message across. And if you don't know your message, you should start with that. And once you do know your message, your brand should match or people aren't going to hear the thing that you have to say. If you want more information on branding, I have a great guide in the link below. You can find it at lilahiggins.com forward slash confident. It's going to walk you through all the visual things you need, why branding is important, and give you a little bit of insight into moving forward. And then if you get on my list, surprise, surprise, in my welcome sequence, you actually get access to a free course called Confidently Branded that's going to show you videos through each of these concepts. So download the guide because that will put you on a sequence that will also deliver to you the entire course. You're welcome. I wanna hear from you. What do you think of these videos? Are they helpful? What type of concepts do you wanna hear about? Um, I need to know all the things because I wanna be helpful to you and actually help you build a brand and implement a brand that you love and that gets your message out to the right people in the right ways, looking really, really good. I really like making videos. I was sitting on my couch the other day and I was like, dang, I can't believe this is my job. This is so much fun. I love editing and pulling in fun little sound effects and jokes and all the things. So you guys tell me what you wanna hear. I would love to hear in the comments below and I'll make it, whatever you say, within reason. Until next time, this is Lila Higgins reminding you to not be stuck, my friend, because you are made for more. The end. These videos just feel super rambly, so tell me if I'm just super rambling because I have not scripted my last three videos and kind of like it that way. <laughs>